Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another online lecture for the Chem Complete series. We're continuing organic chemistry uh, in the ether chapter, and today we are going to start wrapping up this chapter with a look at epoxides. So epoxides are cyclic ethers that form three-membered rings. So for instance, if I had a six-membered ring like this, I could have an epoxide that's coming off of the side as a three-membered ring. So I've got an oxygen here. Note that when I show this stereochemistry, these both have to be wedged up or dashed down because sort of like the bromonium ion that we saw in first semester chemistry, we have to have this sort of syn addition of epoxides in order for them to properly add to the ring. Now, some students are interested in how epoxides are made. We're going to cover that just briefly here, but this should be something you're somewhat familiar with. Epoxides are most commonly made using what's known as a peroxy acid. So if I use RC... O3H, where R is whatever R group I'm interested in, uh, doesn't really matter because uh, the peroxy acid, this portion of the acid, is what we're really interested in here. If I use that with an alkene, I am able to get a peroxide. I'm sorry, an epoxide. That's a peroxy acid. Will give me an epoxide. So that reagent will lead to, and I tend to draw most of my epoxides wedged up you're welcome to draw them dash down that will lead to the epoxide formation so let's take a look at this mechanistically from a mechanism perspective and if I have the alkene remember that this is a source of electrons this double bond here the way I'm gonna draw out the peroxy acid may look a little bit weird but this is in order to help us understand what's really going on here in terms of this mechanism this is a concerted mechanism so concerted mechanisms just like SN2 reactions or Diels Alder reactions are going to all happen in a single step and so what ends up happening here is that the double bond will seek out this oxygen and in return these electrons will come back and form just like a bromonium does it'll form that three membered ring there when this occurs, the electrons associated between the two oxygens will form a double bond with the oxygen here, and the electrons between the carbon and oxygen will come over and grab this hydrogen because carbon cannot have more than five bonds. So what's going to end up happening is that we will get the resulting epoxide, and what we also end up with as a side product of sorts is the corresponding carboxylic acid that would have been associated with that peroxy acid. So there's our epoxide plus whatever this R group is, we're gonna get R C double bond O, and instead of two oxygens here uh, off to the side, we're only gonna have OH. And so this OH really comes from this oxygen right here in the carbonyl as this double bond sort of wraps around and grabs the H as it breaks away from the carbon it's going to be attached to this oxygen and this C double bond O is a result of this oxygen right here taking these electrons and forming a new set of pi bonds or pi electrons to this carbon right here and so that's the general process your epoxide is not charged uh, although it's not particularly stable because remember that we're going to have angle strain here and when angle strain is present we have 60 degree angles and so these carbons right here and right here are looking to break open and let go of the epoxide to one side or the other and so that is the general uh, way that we form epoxides now once I have an epoxide the real focus here is going to be how do the rea uh, how do the epoxides react with different reagents and it turns out that we can use acids because they are a type of ether we can use an acid cleavage or we can use a base cleavage in this case so the epoxides can use acids and bases whereas regular ethers that are in an open chain not epoxide ethers those are only really going to be cleaved by using very strong acids so when we have this type of a situation I'm gonna present an acid so I'll go ahead and I'll say something like HBr 
and when I have this acid the electrons from the epoxide will first grow first go and pick up one of these hydrogens the bromine will leave like normal and I come down to this intermediate here where I basically turn the epoxide into a leaving group now what's kind of peculiar about this if you're used to regular SN1 and SN2 reactions is that this leaving group is internal to the chain or to the ring so what do I mean by that I mean that this epoxide is not gonna pop off and leave into solution it's basically gonna swing open one way or another kinda of like a bromonium ion so I've protonated this the oxygen now has a plus charge it would still have one pair of electrons left and what's going to happen is the BR that's left is going to come in and attack and break the epoxide open now in this case when I'm taking a look here this epoxide is symmetrical on both sides so I can pick out either one of these and I'm gonna come in and split this open and when I do that right as I come in and I attack here the epoxide needs to break away as well so it's going to come off and I'll have an alcohol at the bottom and I'll have a bromine at the top very important note here when we have this type of attack remember if I have a three membered ring like that I have to attack from the opposite side and so when I do this I'm going to end up with the bromine here and I'll end up with the alcohol down here with the original stereochemistry that the epoxide had right so I could also say that there's an implied hydrogen here and an implied hydrogen here and so that would be an acidic opening okay of an epoxide ring this is an acid opening of the epoxide ring and that's we're primarily going to focus on acid openings right now and then we'll have a separate lesson to look at the base openings so the acid openings they look somewhat simple but it can get a little more complex so I'm going to take a look at two different scenarios here so the first one we're gonna have an epoxide that's present on the end of this chain just like this and then the second situation that we'll look at will be an epoxide that's going to be a little more sterically hindered here all right, so now let's say that we have an epoxide like this. And once I have that there, I'm also going to, just to increase the steric hindrance, I'm going to put a CH3 in back here, right? So that would be a tertiary site to the left, secondary site to the right. So let's take a look at each of these situations here and I'm gonna use the same reagent now what's gonna be interesting about this is that these mechanisms are going to behave in different ways depending on how much steric hindrance there is nearby and you may be able to guess if you watch the ether cleavage ahead of time which is the lesson that precedes this one that when I have primary well I should include if I have methyl primary and usually most secondaries although they can be a little bit in between I'm going to have SN2 types of mechanisms but if I have tertiaries allylics or I have benzylics then in that case I'm gonna favor an SN1 type of mechanism because I can form carbocations at all of these different types of sites tertiary allylic and benzylic and so when we have the acid opening it's gonna really depend as I'm analyzing this right so when I come to each of these positions here when I'm looking at these I need to consider what I have present here well if I take a look at this position right here right this would be a primary position and then if I take a look at the position right here this would be a secondary position because it is attached to one two other carbons 
So if I have primary and secondary, I don't have any tertiary, benzylic, or allylic, I'm really looking at an SN2 type of mechanism, all right? So in an SN2 mechanism, the nucleophile is going to attack the least hindered position. So let's proceed forward with this. We have the acidification of the epoxide. And so when I do that, I'll end up with my epoxide ring. that has a hydrogen, right? With a plus charge, that plus is on the oxygen. And then the BR is going to come in and act as a nucleophile. But in this case, this, the sides are not symmetrical. So I, it's not like that ring case that I had before. Well, if I'm favoring SN2 type conditions here, this bromine is going to come in and attack the least hindered position, meaning it's gonna attack the end portion here. That's going to break the epoxide open, sending the alcohol to the more substituted position. So what comes out of this reaction is going to be, it's, it's a similar result as before in terms of the fact that I'm going to have an alcohol and I'm going to have a bromine. But now when I take a look at this, the bromine will exclusively attack at this site right here. I will not see a bromine attacking the secondary position in this case because I'm favoring the SN2 type of mechanism. Now, the reason I set up this one down here with a tertiary site is because we really switch mechanistic details. So these can be a little bit confusing because they're very conditional. It depends on what is present by the epoxide when I'm looking at these. So in this case, I've got secondary over here on the right and I've got tertiary over here on the left. Well, because I have a tertiary present now, I start favoring SN1 type mechanisms. So when this occurs, I'm gonna come out, grab the hydrogen, bromine can leave. And when I create this internal leaving group, so to speak, this leaving group will not have a problem sort of popping open right so here's the epoxide at this point this will happily pop open and leave the carbocation which can then be attacked in the future so what's going to end up occurring here is that this ring will split open when it splits open when the epoxide splits open you need to split it away from the more substituted position because that's where the carbocation is going to go so if I split this bond off what's going to happen is that the next time that I take a look at this molecule, I'll have the CH3 here, right? That's where the epoxide broke off from. And this site right here, this tertiary site, will contain a carbocation, a tertiary carbocation, which means that the alcohol is now hanging out in the secondary position. So now I can proceed forward. The Br-, minus, which acts as the nucleophile, is going to come in and attack at this site here so now I've attacked the more hindered site instead of the less hindered site because I have SN1 type mechanics and that really changes the outcome as far as the regiochemistry is concerned because now I have the CH3 the BR keep in mind I could attack from either way here right so I'll go ahead and I'll say that the CH3 is in front this BR came in from the back but you have to keep in mind that carbocations are sp2 they're flat they're trigonal planar, so that means I can have attack from the front or the back, aka the top or the bottom. And so what I will end up with here, the main point that I want to point out here is that the halogen here ends up in the more substituted position, right? And the halogen here ends up in the less substituted position. So this is really... At the, at the heart of this, it's a regurgitation of the ether cleavage, which we said that certain times primary and methyls will promote SN2, and then tertiaries and allylics, uh, benzylics, etc. When we have that, they're going to promote SN1s. Same thing applies when we're doing acidic openings of epoxide rings. Now, when we do base opening of epoxide rings, we're going to follow exclusive SN2 mechanics. So that's going to be different. 
and I will see you guys for the next lecture. That's what we're going to cover. We're going to finish up the ether chapter, and we will talk about base opening of epoxide rings. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please like and subscribe so that you can get all the newest content as soon as it comes out. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to leave comments, um, and I will get back to them as soon as possible. So thank you guys very much for your continued support, and I will see you for the next lesson. Take care, guys.